So good afternoon, everyone, or good morning, if you're on the West Coast. Um, my name is Mary Bathon, and I am the Assistant or Associate Director of Alumni Events for the Alumni Association at the University of Maryland. We are so excited to have you with us today for our first preview event for the inaugural Young Alumni Conference. Today's webinar, Find, Honor, and Project Your Power. We have a lot of information to cover today, so we'll take all of the questions at the end. However, um, this is definitely an interactive webinar, so definitely use the chat feature to react to the content you see today or ask questions throughout this presentation. Um, this webinar is being recorded, just to let everybody know. And of course, a recording and the slides will be available after this webinar. You'll get that in your email later this week. So our guest speaker today is Aurelia Michael, class of 2008. She was born and raised in the Bronx, New York, where she began her love for creativity and community. At UMD, she earned degrees in dance and business, and then went to the Fashion Institute of Technology and earned a certification in image consulting. Then she jumped right into the professional dance world after college and worked for companies such as Netflix, Gap, and BET. If that was enough, she is also ventured into the world of musical theater, and her credits now include Legally Blonde the Musical, Ghost the Musical, and The Heights, and she was a member of the original Broadway cast of Summer, the Donna Summer Musical. Aurelia is the founder and lead coach of Aurelia Michael Living. With seven affiliate coaches and team members, they offer a range of services on life and career coaching, healing, performance, and communication. She loves to help her clients via private coaching, group coaching, and workshops and seminars across the country. She currently resides in Los Angeles, where she's focused on her career in TV and film, theater, and voice work. So, really, I'm so excited to have you with us today, and I will throw it over to you. Thank you so, so much. I'm like, you can't see my legs, but they were just going like this the whole time. It's always like when someone's reading your bio, you're like, ah, <laughs> but I truly appreciate it. And even just hearing it back, um, it made me think of the fact that it just sounds like Aurelia is never satisfied. She's never satisfied. And, and I think it, that's not a bad thing. A lot of times being a Jack or Jill of all trades or whatever name people want to call it can often have a negative connotation. But I think something that we've learned in these last few years is that you don't have to be committed to just one thing. You just have to be committed to each thing when you're focused on it, which I'll talk about, about in our Pivoting on Purpose seminar in September. But today we're gonna talk about finding, honoring, and projecting your power. So contrary to what the emails have said, this is not a seminar, this is not a workshop, it's definitely not a lecture. This is me, you, on my couch with your beverage of choice, whatever you like. So if you're in your bonnet or you're in your PJs uh, or you're at work, if you want to come on video or off, it's completely up to you. But I would love for you to participate in the chat. So first, tell me uh, where you are. Put in the chat where you are currently. Um, as she mentioned, I am in Los Angeles. So it's about 10 a.m. here. So I just finished scarfing down some breakfast. But let me know where you are. Are you in the DMV area? Are you abroad? Um, and the chat is open. Okay, Washington. Okay, at works. I can't get on. I can't get on the video. I'm at work. Working hard. I know that's right. And I appreciate you coming. Okay, DM. Oh, works for UMD. Okay, Maryland. Okay, so Maryland. And any New Yorkers in the house? No, nope. Maryland, Maryland, Maryland. All right, all right. <laughs> I still claim Maryland, even though uh, from New York, I'll always say the DMV is still my home. So in I love New York too. Thank you, Lauren. Um, and feel free to use the chat throughout. I'm very good at talking and then all of a sudden checking it and coming right back. Um, and if something hits your spirit, something touches your heart or something bruises your ego, feel free to write it in the chat. You could say preach, speak, hashtag truth. I feel seen. Whatever it is, I want you to be able to respond as much as possible to anything that I'm saying. Um, and I'll leave question time at the end for questions, but feel free to throw them in the chat along the way. And if I have, if I'm not going to cover that, I'll be sure to cover it. So as it says here, um, we're presenting find, honor, and project your power. And just to learn a little bit about me outside of that exciting uh, bio. So I am, as she said, from the Bronx, New York. I have been serving drama since September of 1985. 
Um, I went to obviously University of Maryland and then I moved to New York to pursue commercial dance. I got bitter instead of better and I got a car and I moved to LA. And then in LA, I stayed bitter and just kind of floated because that's what most people do the first time they live in LA. And I went back to New York to pursue Broadway. I moved back in with my parents in New Jersey at the age of 31, kind of like the little frat house. We had a good time and eight months of hitting the pavement. I booked the Donna Summer musical on Broadway, did that for a year. The show closed. I decided I'm going to write a book. So I wrote a workbook and I actually brought it to the University of Maryland theater department um, to speak with some students about it because I was a dance major. But at the time, dance and theater were separate. Um, they, none of the credits crossed over. So I ended up on Broadway, but had never even taken a theater class before. So I wanted to talk to them about that perspective. And then once I did that, I decided to come back to LA. So I currently live in LA. I became a dog mom during the pandemic. I don't know if anybody else has some, thank you. Anyone else has any pandemic puppies? They're a good time. Um, and then most recently, April 3rd, I got married. He put a ring on it. Um, and we're just out here living the LA life. And part of why I wanted to talk about this topic, power, confidence, authenticity. These are words, dedication. These are words that I just live by and the conversations that I mostly have throughout the day are surrounded by. But the main three reasons why I chose this topic is the look away, the giveaway, and the wash away. So what are these three things? So the look away, most people don't even recognize the power that they have. And often that comes because we associate money and status with power. But I really believe that it's intelligence and time because I can always, I can make money, I can rip up money, I can burn money, I can find money, but I can't do that with time. We all get the same amount of time every single day. So that really is where our power stems from is the intelligence to utilize our time in the right ways. And that doesn't just mean scholastically, um, Sorry, UMD, don't fire me, but the School of Hard Knocks also teaches you a lot. So intelligence is not just about your degree. That is a label to make you digestible to the rest of the world. My name is Aurelia Michael. I was a dance and business management double major. That's so that, okay, now I associate those terms with this, this, and that. But those are just labels. Life coach, image consultant, voiceover artist are labels. But as a person, I'm a heart healer. I am a people person, I am a connector, I am a net giver, I am hot cocoa on December 25th. I am all those, those, that's who I am versus what I do. And sometimes we lose our power because we're so focused on what we do, defining how much power we have versus who we are. And then we have the giveaway where we can find ourselves giving away our power to those who don't deserve it and to those who don't even ask for it. And I know for a lot of the, um, mentors I had in the past, they would say like, sometimes when you put so much of that power into someone else's hands, whether they're going to give you the job, give you this next opportunity, whether this person wants to date you, it puts a lot of pressure on people. So you want to make sure that you're not giving away that power to people that haven't earned it or aren't even asking for it. And then lastly, we have the wash away. So people with incredible power that the world hasn't seen. And when I have clients like that, I call them the world's best kept secret. And someone once said to me, you can be a secret and you can be a success, but you can't be both. So which one will you choose? Chew on that for a second. Will you be a secret? Will you be the best da 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 da, da that four people know about, that your four best friends know about? Or will you be the success, which requires community, which requires exposure? Um, so we want to make sure that we're not washing away the power that we have because we're just simply not letting the world see it. So we just have to make sure that we're taking care of our power. And if you have any questions, as I said, continue to drop them in the chat. So let's talk about what power is not. So in the chat, if you could tell me what is your definition of power? What words come to you? when you hear that word power. Uh, some of the ones I mentioned is status, um, being known, um, owning the room. Sometimes you'll hear that. What else do I think of when I think of strength? 
Oh, there it is, Nicole. Beaten to it. Control. Oh, that's an interesting one. We're going to talk about that. Authority. Yes, yes. So the teacher has the power. The parent has the, this idea of authority figures, influence. Absolutely. Influence and strength. Absolutely. These are all good. We'll get into this. So let's let's first get into what it's not. I usually like to get rid of the things that it is not. So the first thing it's not is compare and compete. And I use this picture because I'm also a bodybuilder. It's not in my bio, but I've been bodybuilding for two years now. And I know when I first started or whenever I'm in improvement season, I'm always looking over, seeing what other people are doing. Oh, I wish I had that body. So sometimes we can find ourselves comparing and competing with others and they don't even know. And I'm just as guilty as anyone. And we can especially use what I call fake book and instigate scrolling. And before you know it, we're trapped in these snapshots of the highlights of other people's lives. The new year, new me, booked and blessed. I woke up like this pretty in the pandemic. Whatever people are saying now, we can find ourselves seeing these little snapshots and thinking, um, oh, I wish I had something like that. Oh, look how people are responding to this. And then we'll turn around and try to do the same thing as opposed to making it our own and being authentic to what we actually have going on in life. And just so we're clear, because someone did mention this, the ability to make others feel something is not power, that is control. Especially if what you want them to feel isn't authentic and true to who you are. I want this person to know I'm this and I want them to know I'm that. Well, first make sure you are that. I used to say back in the day, I want people to know that I'm sexy. And I used to walk around and I had like these collared shirts and I've, and then I realized I do want people to think I'm sexy, but my sexiness comes from here too. And I want them, and my sexiness should come from here because I have something to say. And so I take the same concept of what sexy is and I make it my own. So we want to make sure that we're not trying to compare and compete with other people because you can be powerful or you can be controlling, but just like success and secret, you can't be both. You have to choose one. So there is also no power in mimicking, as I was saying before. While there are no new ideas under the sun, right? What is new is your approach. So choose to be inspired by others and not intimidated or feel pressure to conform. There's a difference between being inspired and then comparing. Sometimes you need a measuring stick. This person is doing the exact same thing you're doing that you want to do, and they're doing it well. Well, how can I get inspired? Because then that provokes action. When we get intimidated or we start to compare, then we become almost like emotionally paralyzed and we can't move forward. Something else that it is not is manipulation and bullying. Like, oh, that's a bully. But sometimes we can do that. Well, that's just how I am. You know, I just speak my mind. I just do this. I just do that. I'm always late. You know, I always this. There's a lot of power in your words and there is power in silence. There's discipline in choosing when to speak and when not to. And discipline and power leak over into other areas of your life. I didn't just become a bodybuilder because I thought weights were cool. I do think weights are very cool. But the fact that I can go to a diner and there's a menu of everything and I can choose to say, I'm just going to have this and I'm going to have that because this is what my excellence requires. That drips right over. It spills over into other areas. Okay, well, I have all these people I could potentially date, but I know my worth and only this person seems worth my time because it goes the same way when you start to not be disciplined and release your power that also shows up in other areas of your life. Not speaking up to your family about a new change in your life that you feel comfortable about, but you don't feel comfortable yet sharing. Same thing in relationships at your job, not speaking up for yourself. It always carries itself over. So we wanna make sure that we're not trying to manipulate people to feel a certain way about us. That's their job. And then we wanna make sure we're not overstepping and making people feel uncomfortable um, because we feel like that's where we have power is in the authority of our words. And then we have a presentation and perfection, the good old Ronald McDonald smile. So we wanna make sure we're also not walking around the world wearing a costume. Your presence is one of your greatest gifts, your true presence, not what you think people want to feel when they're near you, <clears throat> but your true presence. So I'd rather be loved by few for who I am 
than praised by many for who I'm not, because then you have to carry that on. And what I loved about coming out of college and going to New York was that I could be anyone I wanted to be. When I left high school and got to college, no one from the Bronx was with me that I knew. I could choose to evolve into anything. And these days now I say any every day, you could choose after this call, after this Zoom, I'm going to show the world this and be unapologetic about it because we're often looking for that perfection and perfection is truly the enemy of greatness. No one wants to see perfect. We wanna see progress. We wanna see process. We wanna see testimony. We all love a good testimony. See, Harvey lived in his car. Oprah got all these notes. But then when it comes to us, it's like, oh no, I don't wanna be the test. I don't want the test for the testimonial. I don't wanna be the example. But the only way for us to have a testimonial it's to have a test. And the only way to build endurance is to endure. So taking a step out of your comfort zone into what I call it the growth zone and choosing to have the right people, places, and things in your life that are going to bring your power to the forefront. It's not about the quantity of people around you. It's about the quality. If one person had showed up for this Zoom, that would have been more than enough for me because the quality of the person speaks to me more than having 50,000 people in here who aren't paying attention and who have no idea, no desire to learn about this. I care about the quality in any situation that I'm in. So let's take inventory for a second. And you can put this in the chat. You can also write it down. And you can put like number one, number two next to it in the, in the chat. How powerful do you feel right now at 1018 or 118? in the afternoon. Right now, I'm honestly feeling like an 11 because I was up all night working on a launch for my voiceover program. And I still got up this morning and do what I have to do. Now, tomorrow might not be the case, but today I'm going to stretch outside and say an 11. But how powerful do you feel right now when you got on this and you knew it was about finding, honoring, and projecting your power on a one to 10 scale. Okay, so some of us are right in the dead center. Okay, okay, that's honest. Oh yeah, we can definitely chat about that imposter syndrome for sure. Yep, yep, eight, okay. All right, we've got a mix. How do you exercise your power? And if you don't, what are ways that we could exercise our power on a day-to-day -day basis? Because what I find with clients, whenever they want to change something in one area, I work to change it in another. So if they're having an issue with change in general, I say, okay, today when you wake up in the morning, you usually do A, B, C. I want you to do C, B, A. Just get in small habits of changing the way you do things so that when we get to the bigger things, it's easier to adapt. So one way that I also exercise power is I remind myself every morning who I am and whose I am. The fact that I've woken up this morning means I have the ability to be powerful, that I can make change. A lot of time change doesn't happen because we think as one person, I won't make a difference. But, but that's what happens in my building when one person says, oh, I'll just put my trash down the trash, down the sink. It's, it's barely anything. Then the whole building does it. And then they're like, why is the bill $156 a month? Because everybody's thinking their one thing doesn't make a difference. And it definitely does. So share with me in the chat how you exercise your power. Then also where or when do you think people push their power to the side? I know that can often happen at work. If you're new or you're looking to get a promotion um, or you may have a situation with someone there who's been there longer and you're figuring out how to express that. I know it's easy to push it to the side. Small habits that make you feel powerful, running and yoga, making them a habit every day. Absolutely. And that carries over into all areas of your life, just creating those small habits. A million dollars is just a lot of $1 bills. So small, a big habit is just a combination of small habits we've built along the way. So sometimes when people will say like, oh, just have a cheat meal, it's fine. It won't affect you. It's not about the moment. 
it's about me deciding that my excellence is far bigger than my temptation. And so the next time any temptation comes my way, I already have that measuring stick of the time that I chose my greatness first. And so I'll choose it again. The chance that I'll choose it again increases. So it's never about the one moment. Yeah, the one moment might not make a difference. Yeah, if I don't brush my teeth for one day, it might not make a difference. But if I don't brush my teeth for one day, five days a week, in six months at the dentist, we're going to be in trouble and we're going to be in debt. So it always matters. In times of conflict, I definitely push power to the side. I don't, oh, I don't love confrontation. Let's talk about that. I told y'all this is not a this is not a summary. I have like forty seven thousand slides, but if we get through eight, I'm okay with that. Confrontation, I think, is one of the biggest areas to grow. When you watch a show, when you watch a movie, what is the best way to learn a character? It's through their conflict with other characters. Conflict is like war. It comes from your love of this versus their love of that their pride toward this, their pride toward that, my need for this, but my need for that, it is the biggest area where you can grow. Especially when you're able to say, you know what, it might not be a right or wrong situation, but if it is, I was wrong. And I, and from that, I can grow. And now the next time I'm in a situation, it'll be easier for me to say I'm wrong or to know, no, I'm actually right. And I want to stand up for myself and say that. Because when we run away from conflict, you know, uh, not making a choice is a choice. And that's going to carry on. And unfortunately, there are people in the world who take advantage of that. They know you're not going to come into conflict with them. So then you become their yes man, their yes woman, their yes person. And you become the one that they know they can take advantage of. And so I work as a coach to be the person. I love being the bad guy. I love helping people ruffle feathers. I love helping people see who is there for me and who's here for what I can offer whether that's the person that's always going to listen and say, yeah, 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 let's do that for sure, even though that's not what you really feel. So lean into conflict. What is the worst thing that can happen? I always do worst case scenario. If it doesn't result in death, I'm leaning in. Let's, let's go for it. And not every battle is a war. Not every one is worth it. But you know you have to trust your gut. You have to trust your intuition when you know this is worth discussing. I have something to say, and we're going to get into the second. I have an opinion, and I'm allowed to have that. And that's the first thing is giving yourself permission. I have permission to feel this way, regardless of what this person may think about it, because we all walk around in our own special lenses. Some of them are brand new, beautiful Warby Parker. Some of them are cracked. Some of them are foggy. Some of them don't have lenses in them, so they can't see anyway. We can't predict what they'll say. All we can do is speak to our truth. Yeah. So let's go into, oh, and my last question was, how could you better project your power at all times? I just gave one right now. Lean into conflict. The more your energy says, like, I'm not afraid to have, I call it a, 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 a nice a warmed up discussion. Doesn't have to be heated, just nicely toasted discussion. The less I have them because people don't try me. That's the only Bronx way I can say it. You will not be tried. You teach people once how you do business called life and you never have to teach them again. But if you teach them how you don't do business, then you'll constantly be running into that situation. It'll be different people, different faces, different scenarios, same you. More action, less overthinking. Yes. We will think ourselves, we'll create an action. We'll think about an action, create an action, and then think ourselves out of the action. Think about kids. Kids will jump up on a couch, back tuck off of it, possibly land, possibly not. If they land, awesome, let's do it again. If they land on their face, awesome, let's do it again. As adults, we get up on the couch, we start analyzing the distance, we start thinking about who would be our emergency contact if it didn't happen. We get so caught up here. And we never even take the chance. That happened to me at Maryland when I was auditioning for the cheerleading team. I was so scared to jump back into a back handspring that I would just jump backwards and throw my head back because I was overthinking about whether I would land. So 
So in the overthinking, I never landed. And then when I stopped thinking about it, I landed. So we have to be action driven. That's how we are able to walk, right? When you were a baby, you kept crawling, you got up, you fell, you got up, you fell. If we didn't do that, we'd all be walking around the office right now crawling. We'd be crawling around to the death. So we have to be more childlike in that way. Because as my mom says, you're grown. Ain't nobody, you can't get in trouble. You're grown now. So take responsibility for your actions just as much as you are taking responsibility for your thoughts. Great, great answers. All right. So I didn't even know I could do this with my mouse. Uh oh. How do we find it? So the first one are three foundational ways. Have an opinion, make a decision, and focus on the now. Thank you, Lauren. So let's have an opinion. What does that even mean? So I just think overall, we don't spend enough time deciding what we are, who we are outside of the labels placed on us, what we like, dislike, what we want, what we want right now. How do we get there? Who can come with us? And what legacy will we leave behind? And that might be a lot if you just came out of school. You're like, I have no idea. Or I've been out of school for two years. I have no idea what all these things is. This is the time to figure that out because those, all of those things will seep into your interactions on a day-to-day -day basis. My friends know that after eight o'clock, when that sun goes down, it has to be your birthday to get me out at night. So what do they do? They hit me up in the morning. You wanna go for a run? You wanna go hit the gym? I know you probably won't come, or I'm having a birthday party. Wanna come in the beginning and help with the setup? Absolutely, because people know I have an opinion. And I'm okay with that because I'll keep going back to this. And you can use this phrase, this is what my excellence requires. When I walk into a rehearsal and I have four bags, one's for food, one's for my workout, one's for rehearsal, one's for after the gym, and they go, oh my God, the bag lady. This is what my excellence requires. It might not be what yours requires, or you might not be requiring excellence of yourself, but that's not my issue. Because oftentimes when you're making change, you become a mirror to the people around you and not everyone's ready to see themselves. Most people are not ready to truly see themselves. Some will embrace it and some will project onto you their own challenges. Oh, Aurelia, you doing the most. Well, I guess I have to take up more space for the people doing the least. That's my only answer. I'm not gonna feel bad about what I'm doing. So while I don't suggest living your life for the future, all the time. Living in the moment doesn't mean, okay, let me hit up brunch every other day. Let me hit the club on the weekend. Let me sit around having meaningless conversations about people, places, and things that do not add value to my life. Especially if you're not where you feel like you want to be right now in life. This is the time to have an opinion, stand up for yourself, and be unafraid to voice it. The world will get used to it. They will adapt to the temperature that you set for yourself. Yeah, so next up we have Make a decision. So finding your power is heavily weighted on making concrete decisions on who you are and what you want out of life at this very moment. And I say this very moment because it can change. You don't have to be stuck in one way. Oh, people knew me as the commercial hip hop dancer for 10 years. I can't become a life coach. What will they think? Ah, no one's sitting at home going, I wonder why Aurelia made the change from no one sitting at home pondering about us like that. And I ended up, if I had not become a life coach, there were so many people I was able to serve during the top of the pandemic that finally realized that coaching doesn't need to be a luxury. It's like therapy. It's like counseling. It's like food. It, it's very nourishing to the body. 10 years later, I was able to provide that because 11 years ago, I decided to become a coach. So make decisions and feel strong on them. Being indecisive is one of the number one ways to lose your power. Because if you don't make a decision, someone or something will make a decision for you. And then we have focus on the now. Or really the yesterday, right? This is the time to figure out all these questions so that you can stand strong on beliefs and standards that make your power apparent to the most important person, which is you. Part of why we move away from conflict is because we're not solidified in our opinion. So when people, when my husband, we were first dating, he was like, so what happens if you don't get on Broadway? 
But I was so hell bent on the fact that I was going to be on Broadway. I wasn't even upset. I was confused. I said, I, I don't really understand the question because it's not a matter of if, it's just a matter of when. I've already, I am on Broadway. What are you talking about? I'm just waiting for the email to come in to tell me that I've booked. That's it. And then you realize that when people ask those kind of questions and it gets you all shook up, it's because you haven't created the foundation. You haven't, like you said, you haven't brought power to your words and to your decisions. So really focus on the now. We keep thinking about this, what's your, what's your five-year plan? Did anyone have the pandemic written in their five-year plan? During the pandemic, I'm gonna. So that five-year plan three years ago, that suddenly meant nothing. What do you want right now? And claim it like it's already yours. That's radical manifestation. Manifestation is I will get the money. I will get the job. I will get the spouse. Radical manifestation is like, I'm already married. Just waiting for the ring and for the person to walk through the door. I already have the job. And in six months, I'm going to own my own business so that if I decide to leave that, I can do this. And you'll be surprised how many people around you will be on board. You'll also be surprised how many of the people you thought were your supporters are actually your saboteurs. So it gives you a chance to flesh out the people, places, and things around you. So how do we then honor this? How do we find ourselves honoring who we are, how we want to be powerful, and how we want to show up in the world? So three foundational ways, respect yourself, speak your truth, and be consistent. So in respecting yourself, we call them boundaries. Yes, that's a big word these days, setting your boundaries. I call it honoring your royal decree. We are royalty. You might not see it because it's, it's invincible sometimes, but you all have crowns on your head. This is mine. This is my crown. I am royalty. Everyone does not have privilege to enter my court. And some of them don't even have access to my address. I am, I come out, I wave, I invite those who deserve to be in and those that aren't will stay on the outside. No hard feelings, no soft ones either. Because boundaries is where my fingertips end and someone else's begins. And I can't be connected to all these people so closely. So really making sure that you respect yourself by setting your boundaries of what you will and will not tolerate. As I said other, earlier, teach others how you do business. Your business is called life. You are a business. Whether you own a business is another story. You are a business and you're open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So you have to know when to shut down access and you teach them once your standard operating procedures of life, and you never have to teach them again. Second is speak your truth. Stand up for what you believe in. I personally rarely drink. I don't smoke. I barely hang out. I live in the gym. I eat clean. And I do ultimately the best to stay away from meaningless gossip and drama. But sometimes it finds me and I entertain it. Not gonna lie. Does that mean my life will be better than any of you? No but it means I'm not willing to budge on my beliefs. And if that means I'll miss out on friendships or jobs, I don't have FOMO, I have JOMO. I have a joy of missing out. Oh my gosh, I'm so glad I'm not at that event because I get to do this. Or I get to rest. Or I get to spend time with family and friends. Oh, I'm not worried about worst case scenario, I don't get this job because I spoke my mind about how much I think I could be paid. Well, if I'm at a job that doesn't at least acknowledge, let alone respect my opinion, that's not where I need to be anyway. So that was that rejection was protection because my worth is not determined by how much someone will, someone will invest in me. I invest in me. I bet on myself every day that ends in Y and twice on Sundays because that's a prep day for the week. I bet on myself. And you stepping into your own and saying, I, how you feel about me, how these, how all of this is going on is not a determinant of my power. You will ruffle feathers. And that's how you know you're doing something right. Because you will separate those who are there for you and those who are there for what you represent in their lives. 
especially those that have a hard time with change, are expecting you to be a certain way around them, and then you start to flip the script, the issue is usually not that you've changed, it's just that they haven't. Be consistent. So while we say all these things and we don't wanna put all the responsibility on others, we have to still hold ourselves accountable. We cannot be frosted flakes. Honor your commitment. Be submitted and committed to everything and anything you put your name on. If you see Aurelia Michael on something, you know it's legit. If someone says they hang out with me and they mean it, you know they're good people. Because I have, I'm, I, I constantly am closing in my circle. I almost cut myself off last week. I didn't notice myself. I said, oh, I didn't know that was you. You was acting funny. I keep my circle tight because then I don't have to worry about imposter syndrome because these people around me are constantly reminding me that I am the change I want to see in the world. And so whatever is trying to poke through and make me feel I am less than can't get through. It's impossible. And for me, if I'm sitting, this whole imposter syndrome thing, right? If I'm already sitting at the table, that means I woke up, I got dressed, I maybe put on a little makeup, maybe a heel. I got in the car, I drove to the place, I went inside, I saw the table and I sat down because someone invited me here. So if I have gone through all that and I might not have acknowledged that that was something, right? We don't always acknowledge the achievements that get us to how we got to that table. I might as well sit down and present what I brought with me. I might as well enjoy the meal. And I'm not worried about what everyone else cooked because I don't need six macaroni and cheeses at the table. What I cook, my ingredients, my food, is worthy of being at this table. At least someone thought it was because they got, they put me in here. So I might as well faith it until I make it. I, all I'm trying to do is figure out how I got here, not why. That's the difference in imposter syndrome. You're trying to figure out why am I here in a negative way. I'm just wondering how I got here. Oh, because this person needed this. And I remember three years ago, I did this thing and that. And then, yeah, I do have the credit. Then you, all the accomplishments and things that we sometimes bury underneath the things we need to work on. I still need to work on this. I need to get, we're so good at telling people what we need to get work on and not telling people how amazing we are, which is why the bio makes me cringe because I'm like, it's not really up me because I need to continue to do that of myself. And someone may say, oh, you stuck up, you conceited, you think you all that. I am all that. I don't think I know it. And so are you. And that's okay. I can be all that and you can be all that too. It's not me versus you. And I was the same way when I was auditioning back in the day. I wasn't like, oh, there's another black girl with short curly hair. It's me or her. I'm like, nah, sis, we can do this together. Let's show them that we can both win. And I do that in every area of my life because what's for me gonna be mine no matter what you try to do. I'm unstoppable. I'm indispensable. And so are you. So make sure that you're being consistent in whatever you're doing. So how do we project it? Let me check time because I'll be talking. Okay, 10 minutes, I can do this. And then we'll have time for questions. So how do we project it? Three foundational ways. Go for all your dreams, but pace yourself. Tell others like it's already happening and then bless others. So some of this we've already covered. Go for all your dreams, but still pace yourself. It is, if it is not the most obvious time right now, how fragile life is. Within this year alone, we have seen lives taken from injustice, wrong place, wrong time, senseless violence, and everything in between. Don't run so fast towards your dreams that you miss the unexpected blessings and opportunities but definitely don't stop moving. The fact that you can be on this call in the middle of the day says you're blessed. And we want to take that blessing and run with it. Tell others like it's already happening. I mentioned this earlier with Broadway. When I got to New York, everybody's like, oh my gosh, you're really, you're back. I'm like, actually, I'm forward because I didn't come here to do what I used to do. I'm forward to New York. What are you doing here? I'm on Broadway. Oh my gosh, what show? I don't know yet. I'm just waiting for them to figure out the theater and the show. And then I'm gonna get started. So everyone, while I was in New York for eight months, thought I already was on Broadway. So then when I got on, people were confused. They were like, wait, did you switch shows? I was like, no, I had just already decided for myself that what I wanted was already mine. 
So I didn't have to worry day in and day out about going after it. As long as I just stayed the path, it was coming my way. So talk to others about your new business idea, about leaving your job, about getting into the dating scene, about getting a new car, like it's already yours. Y'all, did y'all see my Tesla in the garage? It's white and it's beautiful. And I got the plug-in right next to it. You might be living in your friend's couch with no car and on a bike, but you have to already see it. And then it's like, when I got my car, I was like, why does everybody want my car? It's not that, it's just that my, my mind is set on it now. So I see it everywhere. So tell others like it's already happening. And then of course, bless others. I always say, if you got the juice, grab some extra cups and start pouring. I am a blessing to bless others. That's it. I am the vessel. I believe that, that God will take me to the highest heights so that other people can stand on my little shoulders because I'm only five foot, but their mighty shoulders can stand on my shoulders and do things greater than I ever did. And then somehow mention me along the way. That's legacy. It's not about my, my resume. It's about what I did to affect others. So I put two minutes, but let's take a one minute break. I want you to just write about anything that came up for you during the first portion. I'm going to kind of speed through the second section and feel free to share anything in the chat. <clears throat> anything that came up for you. Ooh, excuse me. That was a lot. Y'all are hanging in there. I love all this in the chat. Yes, yes, power of words. The crown every day. Don't let that crown slip. Don't let those jewels fall out for anyone and continue to bless others. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you so much, Lauren. Absolutely. All right, so as y'all are still writing, you can still write in the chat. Your crown has been bought and paid for. Put it on your head and wear stick that thing on tight because there are moments where depending on the room we're in we'll decide how powerful we want to be if I'm the newbie on the block I may not show as much power if I'm the veteran in the room I may how can we show up I like to show up the same way no matter where I am I'm I'm always at about an eight simmering to a nine because that's just how I choose to live life because I can not because I have to, because I can. I really like the make a decision advice because you're right. I don't want other people deciding who I am or what I want to be for me. Yeah. And if you're not sure who you are, people are already doing that. And that's the scariest part is when you look back and go, oh, it's already happening. Well, I'm afraid what people will think of me if I do this. Well, the real issue is right now, no one's thinking about you at all. So I'd rather you at least be thinking about me. And hopefully what I'm putting out is in alignment with what you're seeing. Yeah. All right, let's briefly just go through power, my acronym for it. <laughs> so power, passion, ownership, wealth, energy, and reputation. So passion is also about being patient. Let the world know you're hungry for something, but you don't wanna look thirsty. Make sure that your passion also matches your practice. We can be really excited about something, but that's like what we were talking about earlier. We have to match that thinking with action and then pay it forward. Whatever you want to get, give more. Ownership. Take responsibility for what you are in control of. Don't blame the world for all your challenges. And if you fail, fail forward. I always say, don't burn, from, don't get burned from your errors, learn from your errors. Then they will always benefit you. You will always win. And in terms of ownership of your body, your mind, body, and spirit are your temple. You are the property owner. So take care of your land because you only get one. You only get one. So take care of it, own it. And then wealth, don't wait to make it to start living because this well, you can wait to make it because this is it. This moment, you have arrived because this is the only it that is guaranteed. And wealth is not just about money. Wealth is abundance, mindset. Seek and expect abundance in all facets of your life. I don't spend money. I make investments. There's a difference. 
And then if I want more of X, I give more of X. If I want more love, I give more love. If I want more money, believe it or not, I give more money because it always finds its way back to me. Plus them. Energy. As I said earlier, I set the tone and temperature when I enter a room. I don't follow it. You might not see me first because as I said, I'm barely 5'1", but my resume says 5'2". But I, I don't want you to give the temperature to the crowd because sometimes it's too hot or it's too cold in there. You still want to be sensitive to the energy of others because sometimes hurt people hurt people. So sometimes people's energy is just a reflection of what they have going on. But Set the tone when you enter the room for yourself and put 152.7% minimum into anything you have your name on because it represents you. And lastly, if it doesn't excite you and it doesn't ignite you, don't let it invite you. That's how I make my decisions of the people, places, and things I have around me. If it doesn't get me excited, if it's not igniting something in me, I'm good. I'll RSVP, nope. Reputation, and this is especially for coming out of school, your reputation will go so much further than your resume. My resume has not made crazy changes, especially as a dancer, but my reputation for speaking has me chatting with you right now, 15 years after I've graduated. Maybe it's also my youthful look, but I think it has something to do with my reputation that keeps making its way around Maryland. So who you are will go a lot further than what you do. And first impressions are really hard to change. So really bring you to the table because there's nothing worse than having to convince somebody who you really are down the road because you were being who you thought they wanted to be. I like to live a life where if people were to talk bad about me to you, like if we got off of here and somebody hit you up and was like, you went to that thing with Aurelia, she thought, bah, 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 bah. you wouldn't believe it. And you've only known me for 49 minutes but you wouldn't believe it. I want you to live that life where someone were to say, oh my gosh, you heard Kim, da, 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 da. Uh -uh, not, not, you must be talking about another Kim. I'm not talking about Kim that I know. You're not talking about Lauren that I know, Nicole that I know. That's the kind of life we want to live. <clears throat> so in conclusion, <laughs> you're powerful. You're beautiful inside and out. You are talented. You are magical. These are words we don't often use when people say, how are you feeling? I'm feeling magical today, actually. You are indispensable. You are gold. And don't waste any more time that has no expiration date, no. Focus on anything else but being today's greatest version of yourself. That's all you can do. I can't be tomorrow's greatest version just yet. And yesterday's greatest version is now old news. And then encourage others, or as I say, give them the unnecessary permission to do the same. I feel like when I walk around in my true and authentic self and I speak it, I make someone else go, I should do the same thing. It's unnecessary permission, but I'll give it nonetheless. Um, and for homework, I want you to write these words down if you didn't write them already. Uh, write this down. And I want you to create one action step for each word that you'll commit to working on for the next seven days. I want you to put it on a sheet of paper, write it out, no typing, write it out. One action step for each one for the next seven days. I want you to sign it at the bottom and I want you to email me a picture of it. Holding you accountable. Your best friends will hold you accountable to the things you say you do. You came here either because your power is gone, you haven't started, or you think it's gone, you haven't worked on it enough, it just needs a little test drive, you want to know how to get more powerful. Part of it is being accountable. You showed up for a reason. So let's get all we can out of this. So everyone has those written down or took a screenshot. Um, so just to chat a little bit about what I do, and then if you have questions, now's the time to drop them in the chat. Um, Aurelia Michael Living has six amazing coaches that work with us. You can take a screenshot of this too. Every good coach should know where their areas of strength are and should have no problem leaving money on the table so that other coaches who are more qualified in specific things can be of service. 
So we have Christian Saludes, who is a life coach, also executive director of AML. Jojo Diggs, we did a live yesterday on Instagram, if you want to check it out, on the flow of friendship, net giving versus networking, how to give in people into my net instead of working them into my net. Um, and she teaches people how to, she has several courses on how to take shame from the past and to begin healing from it so we can move forward. Alicia focuses on intimacy and communication. That's with friends, family, your significant other, just better ways to communicate and express what you want. Step me up top. Um, Nafi just recently joined us. It shouldn't say healing shame. She actually is a wellness coach. So she is helpful in nutrition. She was my first personal trainer uh, when I got into bodybuilding. She's incredible. Morgan is an acting career coach. And then Roberto Paris is also a life and career coach. And then I put our information below. Uh, AureliaMichael.com is my personal page. That's where I put all the things. Aurelia, AML is our coaching page. And our voice on demand, as I mentioned, I'm a voiceover artist as well as a coach. I created a community for people that had no idea how to get into voiceover because I'm sure you've heard a commercial and said, I could do that, but you're just not sure how. Um, and then the Instagrams are all the same. Aurelia Michael, Aurelia Michael Living. Feel free to post on there and talk about your experience today. I'd love to share it. I'd love to share you with the community so you can um, tag us in Aurelia Michael Living as well as Maryland alumni Instagram. And then email me at the admin at aureliamichael.com. Feel free to share any testimonials about today um, as well as a picture with your commitments because I'll be checking in. And then if you're interested in voiceover or know someone who might be um, VOD assistant at gmail.com is where to find us. And now I'm going to turn this thing off so I can see some faces. Do we have any questions? Yeah, Don't feel free to type shy. your question in the chat or I mean, take yourself off mute for these last few minutes. Oh and yeah, I'm feel off. free to come off mute. We're, we're hanging. Feel free to it's usually one person asks a question and then the ball gets rolling. And it doesn't have to be about this topic. Pick a topic, any topic. I love a challenge. I love a question on the spot. It doesn't even have to be about this. Anything, life, um, image consulting, bodybuilding and fitness. Um, and what else do I do? Choreography. I'm also a plant mom. I'm not doing too well at that, but I'm also a plant mom. Um, books. I always recommend Atomic Habits by James Clear. If you're not reading that, get into it. I've read it three times. I don't spend money. I invest. Yes. So I made this funny post um, on Reels where I'm like calling myself bougie because I have a lot of coaches. I have I have a life coach. I think every life coach should have a life coach. I have a vocal coach. Um, I have a voiceover coach because I find when I invest, it's all about the return on it. So if I invest 20 bucks in McDonald's on a 20 piece chicken McNuggets, which I haven't had in about 20 years, but you can still taste it, right? When you say chicken McNuggets, take 20 piece chicken McNuggets with some sweet sour sauce mixed together. Where, where does that show up in my life later? Not in the best way. There's nothing I'm going to benefit from that other than satisfying a temporary satisfying a temporary craving. Actually, it does work. It's actually really a waste of my money because I know that that's not living in my excellence. And then the next time there's an opportunity to not live in my excellence, the last thing my brain will remember because we do most things on a day-to-day -day basis off of fear or off of remembering something from the past. I'll remember that time and I'll say, oh, well, I got away with it that time. Maybe I'll get away with this this time. But when I invest $20 in advertisement for my business. That's going to go a lot further. So I look at what are the pros and cons to making, to putting in this money into this thing? Or I'll ask my coach, honestly, sometimes I don't feel qualified to make a decision. And I can be honest in saying that. And I'll say, or a trusted friend, what do you think about this? Does this seem like a good deal? Because 10 sodas for $10, for $10 seems like a good deal, but a bargain's not a bargain if you don't need it. So it might not be your good deal or it might be your good deal, but not for somebody else. So always figuring out after I do this, after I buy this, what are the possibilities that can come from it, negative or positive? 
Great question. Anybody else? No problem, Shirley. Thank you. Thanks, Meg. This is a fun one, I guess. So when the movie is written about your life, right? Zelia Michael yeah. story. Are you going to play yourself or would you have someone play you? I would totally have Janelle Monet play me as I would play Janelle Monet in her. Perfect. I love it. I love her. Um, I would make a cameo though. I would play the high school me, something okay. like that. While I, like I still it. can. I like it. I love that question. Well, if you have no other questions, I'm going to put my email again in the chat just in case you missed it. You can always send questions. We do 15 minute free clarity calls with all of our coaches. Oh, Lauren, you have a question. Come on in. But yeah, we do yeah. Um, free coaching uh, consults for anybody. Go ahead. I would like to, first of all, just thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to pour into My every pleasure. single one of us. I have been on fire within my office. Um, thank you so much. Um, a lot of confirmation. Um, I'm definitely empowered. I definitely plan on contacting you because I think awesome. that you, the world needs to hear your voice even more than even today. I receive so that. Thank you so much for continuing to serve. God bless you. Thank you. I received that. I'm already, I'm going after this, I'm heading to Dubai for a large, um, a life coaching conference. That didn't happen. But if you thought it did, that's the power of radical manifestation. You were going to check my Instagram later, see if I was in Dubai. And that's how we do it. Uh, my friend has a son who's making irresponsible choice. She gives him space because he's a baby. What ideas can I use? to help her making irresponsible choices. Yeah, the, the trickiest part of that, right, is the youth of today is not the youth of when we were growing up, is not the youth of the past. So sometimes the things that we use, most of the time, the way we, I don't have kids, but the way that we often learn to discipline or to connect is the way that we were taught, right? We usually give the same love languages we receive, but I think we first have to see what are the love languages also of our children. We usually refer to the love languages when we talk about our partners and how our partner wants to be loved, but we also have to lean into how our kids see love because there are ways that sometimes we think, well, I should show it in this way, but they're not receiving it in that way. And sometimes, yeah, you do have to pull back, but also bringing in support. There are so many um, ADHD communities with people who may be younger, who aren't related. I have clients that are 14 and one that's a freshman now in college. And the conversations we're able to have make it easier for the conversations they have with their parents just simply because it's not someone, what, what choice you make in life does not affect me on a day-to-day -day basis. So I can give you the most unbiased opinion um, and support possible. So sometimes it's about bringing somebody in who they can see as like a big brother, a big sister, as a mentor, who can get the same information to them just through a different tunnel, just using different words. Great question, thank you for that. And thank you, Lauren, I'm not really going to Dubai today but you never know. Look, speaking it into the air. Um, but yeah, if you have any other questions, you know where to find me. Slide yeah. in my DMs. We love a good DM slide. Anytime. <laughs> Thank yeah. you, Nicole. We'll send out this recording to everyone um, in a few days and also all of Aurelia's contact information um, so you can follow up with her directly as well as information on the two other webinars we have in the series coming up to prepare you for our first Young Alumni Conference. So thank you everyone for joining us. Enjoy the rest of your day and hope to see you at a future Alumni Association event. Thanks everyone. Yes. Thank you. Bye everybody.